Hello, our most developed student. My name is Confident. Welcome to the revision of the Mathematics N3 question paper, which was written in November 2020. So we have already looked at uh, question number one, question number two, and question number three. And in this section, we're going to focus on question number four. And question number four usually deals with coordinate geometry. Now, let us look at how the examiners um, uh, set in this question. Now, it is a diagram that is given. As you can see, it says consider the following figure A. So this is the figure A. I will show you the full diagram after the statement. It says consider the following figure A. EF, uh, if I can be showing you, there is E which is the coordinates 1, 2, and there is F. We are not given the coordinates. So it says EF is parallel to AC. Now you can already see the parallel lines that they are showing, which means this is uh, C. It's not yet clear, but that is point C. Uh, so EF, which is EF, is parallel to A and C and the sign for parallel lines you can see that and then it says and BD is perpendicular now there is BD it is perpendicular to AC and there is AC and you can see that at that point D the sign for perpendicular is that 90 degrees that you can see there so that means the line BD and AC they meet at 90 degrees and then it says AE is equal to EB. So we have got our AE and we've got our EB and they are showing you by those lines to show that the two are equal, which means in a way, if these two lines are equal, the center is E, which is, I mean, the center of AB, it is uh, point E. Now, if I can show you the full figure A, so that is what they were explaining there. This is our full uh, diagram. As you can see, uh, the coordinates of A is 6, 5, of E is 1, 2, and then of C is 3, minus 7. Now, let us look at the question. The question says, uh, the first 4.1, it says, determine the following. And the first one says, uh, 4.1, the gradient of AC. So they want you to find the gradient of AC. So I will go to back to the um, part on AC. And if you still remember, the gradient is given by the formula M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So this is the formula for the gradient. So what you need uh, to identify is which one is your X1 and your Y1. So I can go to my A in that point 6, you make it your X1 and the point 5, you make it your Y1. You go to C, you make 3 your X2 and 7 your Y2. So that is actually how you can approach it. And then we can move on now to say, gradient which is m of ac meaning gradient of ac is equal to y2 as you can see y2 is minus 7 minus y1 is 5 all over uh, x2 which is 3 minus x1 which is 6 so that is um, how you can find the gradient of that line in this case it is AC, then you can use your calculator. And the gradient there we are given is 4. So which means the gradient of AC, you can actually write, uh, if I can write down there on the question to say gradient of AC, they are asking you the gradient of AC, which in this case, is equal to 4. 
after the calculations that we did and you can see that the mark allocation for that uh, if you do it uh, correctly you're going to get two marks for that that is the gradient of AC so this is just a routine problem it was not difficult it wanted you to understand or to know the formula as well as the two points how to uh, put them in the formula let us move on to the next question we are still on question number four the diagram is the same the statement is the same but now let us look at 4.2 now question 4.2 says uh, we need to uh, determine the following the equation of AC in the form of y is called to mx plus c now they want us to find the equation of uh, AC we are already given some information if you remember in the previous um, question we were told that the gradient of AC in this case it was gradient of AC we found that it was equal to um, it was equal to 4 from the, the, the previous question so they are using uh, the previous question to find the second question so that was the gradient of AC and then there are two approaches that you can do to find the equation of a line now if I can go to my formulas if you go to the back of the question paper and you will find your formulas and in this particular case it is uh, 6 if you can look at 6 there is the part of coordinate geometry and this is the formula for the straight line which is y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1 so if I can use this formula and say y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1 so this is the formula that um, is uh, given for the equation of a straight line now for me to be able to use this formula I have to now uh, identify which one is my y which one is my y1 which one is my m which one is my x and which one is my x1 now already we know our m we said in this case the m is a 4 here if you still remember we said uh, from the previous statement the m is a 4 now what you need to do is to go to the line AC and choose any point you can choose for example A and say point A is 6 and 5 now if you choose point A is 6 and 5 you will then uh, remember the points the coordinates are written as x y so this will be now your x1 this will be your y1 then you substitute it in the original such that you will have your y minus the y1 is 5 is equal to m which is 4 x minus x1 in this case it is 6 then you solve for I mean you make y the subject of the formula which is y is equal to you take minus 5 to the other side at the same time you just expand that distribute for there in in this case 4 times x it is 4x 4 times minus 6 it is negative 24 and the 5 will become plus 5 so you have got y is equal to 4x and then if you subtract 24 minus 5 it is negative 19 so that is what you are having in this case so that is the equation of the line now if you can go back to the diagram I mean to the statement it says find the equation of the line in the form y is equal to mx plus c this is exactly what we did if you can uh, if I can write it down here to say the answer was y is equal to 4x minus 19 as you can see it matches the way they wanted us to uh, to write the answer and for that you will get your two marks in this case our y is called to m is 4 the x is like that and the c is negative 19 so that is that is how you you will have solved it using the formula but uh, usually I prepare I prefer 
actually method two for that if I can uh, do method two which I prefer whenever you are finding the equation of a line now already they told us find it in form of y is equal to mx plus c that's what they told us the first thing we need to uh, in this equation we need to know what is my m and what is my c and then let me use uh, the new point instead let me use c now point c is 3 and minus 7 so with that remember we know that our point uh, y, I mean m is equal to 4 here if you still remember so it will be y in this case this is my x and this is my y so the y is negative 7 is equal to m which is 4 and the x there is th I mean is 3 and then is plus c so in this case this formula allows you to find point c which is negative 7 is 12 plus c and then you take 12 to the other side which is negative 7 minus 12 is equal to c now minus 12 minus 7 is minus 19 is equal to c now if you're going to write it in the form of y is equal to mx plus c you'll have y is equal to m which is 4x and then plus c remember c is minus 19 so it is the same answer that uh, matches the previous answer that we got i prefer as i said this particular method because already it gives you in that format of y is equal to mx plus c but whatever way you still get your two marks now let us move on to the next question um in the next question we are still looking at the same diagram. Now, the next question says we need to determine the length of uh, EC. So, we are interested in that part. In which case, we have to find out our E and our C. As you can see from the diagram, we have got our point E and we have got our point C. So now, whenever you want to find the length, you need to go to the formula. And in the formula, I'll use the previous slide in the formula here. Whenever they're talking about the length, it is this formula which deals with the distance. So that is the one that they want you to use for the length. As you can see, it says D is equal to square root of X2 minus X1 squared plus Y2 minus Y1 squared. So I'm going to use that formula D is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So that is the formula. Now the question is what is your x1 and your x2 and what is your y1 and your y2? Now you have got your point E. Now in your point E, you can make uh, the first point being X1 and Y1. And then in C, remember it says DC. And then the C becomes your X2 and also your Y2. So you have got these two points. And then you're going to then find the distance, which is D of EC, meaning distance of EC is equal to square root of now our x2 as you see it's 3 minus our x1 is 1 and it is squared plus our y2 in this case is minus 7 minus y1 which is minus 2 and then you put a squared in that and then if you simplify it, it's easier to use a calculator once so that it can give you the answer straight away. So you are going to have, in this case, square root of 3 minus 1 squared plus minus 7 minus 2 squared. 
when you've done that it will give you square root of 85 so you can insert form that is insert it will be square root of 85 units so that is that but now if um you need to leave it in um uh three decimal places you can further simplify and say as i said it is three minus one squared plus minus seven minus two uh squared so with that okay so you press sd there to shift setup with six and round off the three decimal places and press SD to be 9,220. So that's what you'll be having. And then remember, we are not told any units. You can leave the, the, the units like that. So you can come here to say, determine the length of EC. You can see that the length of EC is equal to square root of 85 or nine comma two two zero units so that is the part remember you have to rely on the formula that you're given for that now let us move on to the next next question it is still on the same diagram but we're looking at question 4.4 it says we need to find the equation of ef now we have to identify our e which we already have we've got point e there and we've got f which we don't know the point but we want to find the equation of ef but now for us to find the equation of ef remember the equation of a line already know it is given as y is equal to mx plus c so that is the equation of a line which means there are two things you need to find you need to know your M and you need to know your C. In, in this case, because EF, we are told that EF is parallel to AC. If I can go to the formulas, I can go to those previous formulas. Now, they are telling us about two lines, perpendicular lines and parallel lines. So for now, I'm interested in the parallel lines. You can see that it says for parallel lines, m1 is equal to m2 which means if the lines are parallel the gradient of line 1 is equal to the gradient of line 2 in other way other words it says uh, gradient of parallel lines are the same or they are equal so if i'm going to use that concept remember the gradient of this line which i will call my m of a c was equal to if we go backwards to find what was the gradient of that line, they told us the gradient of that AC was equal to 4, if you still remember. So we're going to uh, use that to say the gradient of this line is 4. It automatically means the gradient M of EF is also equal to 4. So here you can say M of EF is equal to m of ac which is equal to 4 and you know the reason these are parallel lines and then the next part is to find c and we know that our point e we have got our point e as 1 2 so where there is 1 2 we'll make it our x and we'll make it your y so in this case where there is x i mean where there is y you are going to say 2 is equal to m which is 4 and the x there is 1 uh, plus c. And then you've got 2 minus 4 is equal to c. And then negative 2 is equal to c. Then with that, you write it now in the form of y is equal to mx plus c, which is y is equal to m, which is 4x, and plus c, which is negative 2. So that is how you are going to find the answer to that. But remember, you've got your option of using the original 
uh, equation given in the formula, which is y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. Now, when you are using this one, you must remember that in that point E, this becomes your x1 and your y1. So that you've got y is equal to where there is y1, I mean y minus it is in this case y minus now the y1 there is 2 is equal to m and our m we say it is 4 and then x minus x1 which is a 1 there so you have got y is equal to the 2 will transpose and you open the bracket here if you open that bracket you have got 4x minus 4 plus 2 in which case it becomes y is equal to 4x minus 2. You can see that the answer still maintains as being the same. So whatever method you're going to use, it doesn't matter, but it will lead you to the same answer. So here, if you can, um, the equation there, you can see that the equation of that is y is equal to 4x minus 2. And if you do that well, you're going to be... Uh, given as you can see this question was worth three marks so i think it was good marks for that now moving on with the next question again we are still on question four on the same figure a now 4.5 says we need to find the coordinates of b so you can see that i have my point b there but if i can come back to the full diagram here Okay, let, let me just check the marks. The coordinates of B, um, this question is 4 marks, so which means um, they might be a little bit of working involved, and it is very important for you to take note of such marks, especially uh, 4 marks means you need to be very sensitive with how you, with how you approach it. So they're saying the coordinates of, of B so I need the coordinates there of B, but there is some information that I'm given that can allow me to find the coordinates of B. And the information that they told me is, they said in this case, if I can go back to the statement, they said AE, if you still remember AE is equal to, from here to here, is equal to EB. And they showed it by these two lines here to say these are equal lines so if these are equal lines what it means of that point it means that point is the center of a b so what is the center of a b it means e in this case e is center of a b so if e is the center of a b we now use that word Instead of center, I use the word E is the midpoint because center is a midpoint. So E is the midpoint of what? Of AB. Now I'm going to again go to the formulas. And in the formulas, you can see that there is a part that talks about the midpoint and it uses P. If you look at this, it says midpoint there. And then says p is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2 and then uh, that with y1 plus y2 over 2 in coordinate form so we are going to use that to say for the midpoint p is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2 and that is the x coordinate y1 plus y2 divided by 2 is the x coordinate so that's the formula we're going to use so now with that if I want the midpoint which is P in this case of a B remember they said the midpoint of a B if I go to my a and I make that point my x1 and my y1 now I go to B now B, I'm not given any coordinates. I will make those coordinates X and Y. 
So if these coordinates are x and y, the x1 will be my x2, the y1 will be my y2 in this case. So that is how you approach that. So you say equal to where there is x1, I've got my 6 plus my x2 there is just x divided by 2. Do the same thing with the y. Where there is y1, I have a 5 plus where there is a y2, I've just got y over 2. Remember, I do not know the coordinates of P, that's why I said let the coordinates of P be x, y. You can choose any number to say M and N or whatever, um, not a number, I mean any letters that you feel comfortable with. I just used X and Y because it's mostly the general form of coordinates, So, but you can choose to uh, name them in any way, it will still give you the same answer. So now, that is how you would have found the uh, midpoint of AB. So this is the midpoint. P of AB is the midpoint of AB. But what is interesting is we already know the midpoint of AB. Now the midpoint of AB, if I can just do this, to say they told us that... Um, okay, consider the following figure. EF is parallel to AC and BD is perpendicular to AC and they said AE is equal to EB. So remember we said E is the midpoint. So E being midpoint of AB, what it means in that coordinate of E being um, 1 and 2 so with these coordinates, what you have to do now is to compare or equate these coordinates. That is how you need to approach that. Now, how do you equate these coordinates? What you need to do is you look at this coordinate. Remember the, 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 the coordinates of, of, of AB is that. Now, that particular coordinate is supposed to give us one so if you compare these two that what you do is you have to equate them so what you say is 6 plus x over 2 is must give me one that's what you are saying it must end up or it must equal or equate to one and then after that you have to simple solve um, for x you multiply by 2 you multiply by 2 and then after that you have got 6 plus x is equal to 2 and then you transpose the 6 so that x is equal to 2 minus 6 and our x there is equal to minus 4. So that is the part that we're having our x being minus 4. Now you do the same thing with um, the y part, if I can just have, I think it's not clear, but let me use my right pen. So what it means is again, this part here will be equal to that part. Okay, I think it's much clearer this one. If I can say 5 plus y over 2 it must give me a 2. Again, you multiply by 2, you multiply by 2 so that the 2 can cancel, so that you are going to have uh, 5 plus y is equal to, uh, in this case, a 4. So you have got your y is equal to 4 minus 5, and in this case, our y will become minus 1. So we have got now, the question was uh, determine the following and the question here was the coordinates of P. Now remember the coordinate form you start with the x-axis. Now x is minus 4 and y is negative 1. So these are the coordinates of point B. 
Now, if you can also look at the diagram, and then you can see that even our point B, according to our Cartesian plane, this is our Y. So you can see point B is, and this is our X, is below the Y axis, which is negative, and is on the left hand side, which is also negative. Hence, it makes sense to have X being negative and Y also being negative. So as I said, this was going to give you four marks. Now, moving on to the next question. Again, we're still on question number four. Now, this is 4.6. It still continues. And 4.6 was out of three marks. It says, determine the following, the equation of BD in the form of Y is equal to MX plus C. I think we also see that it is uh, similar to the question they asked. I think it was the second question uh, to to um, request it, leaving your answer in the form of Y is equal to MX plus C. And I'll always encourage you, whenever you're dealing with the equation of a line, always leave your answer in the form of Y is equal to MX plus C. But now they are talking about the equation of B and D. We can already see our B in the diagram and our D, but there is a statement that talks about B and D. If you go backwards, if you still remember the statement, they told us that BD, in this case, is perpendicular to AC. So now if you still remember, we have got our M of AC or gradient of AC here was equal to, if you still remember, it was 4. Now, with this gradient of AC being 4 and BD being perpendicular, if you go to this uh, to our formula again, we have a part which talks about perpendicular lines. Now, if you look at that, it says perpendicular lines M1, um, M1 dot M2, meaning M1 times M2 is equal to negative 1. So for perpendicular lines, I'll use the sign to show that it's perpendicular. It says M1 times M2, it is equal to minus 1. Meaning, if I take the gradient of AC times the gradient of BD, they told us already that these lines are perpendicular. When I multiply the two gradients, I must get a negative 1. But the good thing is I know the gradient of AC, it is 4. So it to be 4 times gradient of BD, which is equal to negative 1, divide by 4 on both sides, so that it allows you to find the gradient of BD, which is equal to minus 1 over 4. So now I think you can see the examiners like testing you if you understand what we mean by the gradient of perpendicular lines. Initially, they wanted the gradient of parallel lines. They were talking about EF and AC. And you are supposed to know that parallel lines have equal gradient. Now, they want you to also uh, be able to check if you know the gradient of perpendicular lines. If you know one gradient, you can also know the other gradient. Now, when you've got that information, we know the gradient of BD now, which is M of BD is equal to negative 1 over 4 and what you need to do remember you know your point B they told us I mean we did actually calculate the point B if we go previously we said coordinates of B was minus 4 minus 1 so here you have got negative 4 and you have got negative 1 from these coordinates we can go to the equation of a line being y is mx plus c and we've been using this one more than once now where there is uh, this is your x and this is your y so where there is y you say minus 1 is equal to m remember m now is negative 1 over 4 and then your x in this case is your negative 4 and then this equation allows you to find point 
I mean C which is the Y intercept so the negative and the negative will cancel and 1 over 4 times 4 gives you a 1 so you have got minus 1 plus 1 is equal to C actually it's not like that it is minus 1 is equal to now the negative and the negative cancelled so that you've got 1 plus C now when you transpose 1 it will become minus 1 minus 1 is equal to C therefore negative 2 is equal to C with that one you can now find the equation of a line as y is equal to m which is negative 1 over 4x minus 2 which is the c there so we'll come back here and say the equation of a line as they are saying is y is equal to minus 1 over 4x minus 2 remember i told you you can actually use um the other formula which says y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1 in this case you are going to say y minus minus 1 is equal to m which is negative 1 over 4 x minus minus 4 then when you simplify you must simplify it it will still give you that particular answer I think you've seen that it works out to be the same thing. Let us move on to the next question. It says consider again the same diagram. We are still on question four. And the next question says uh, 4.7. We must find the coordinates of D. And this particular question was for max. We are looking for the coordinates of D. And what is also important to note is you can see that uh, we have got 20 here, meaning this is the end of question 4. It was out of 20 marks. So in a fair way, it was possible for you to get all these 20 marks uh, if you studied your your uh, coordinate geometry well. And with um, my mathematics entry for the underdogs, all these questions, I cover them in detail. Trust me, you are not going to be you are not going to lose marks on this. You are going to get everything correct because I cover in detail such questions on coordinate geometry and also I provide a lot of videos for this. So I would encourage you to try to uh, grab hold of those uh, videos so that you can get enough practice. Now again, as I said, it says determine the following the coordinates of D. So we are looking for that point. Now there is also some information that we have telling us about D they didn't mention it but you need to be able to um, it's already implied you know what I mean say they didn't say it but when they say find the coordinates of D D is where the two lines are meeting which are those lines it is where line BD is, meet, is meeting line AC so that is what they wanted you to know. BD and AC will meet at point D. In other ways, they are crossing each other or they are intersecting at D. So there's something interesting or important with the intersection point. So intersection of BD and AC is at is happening at D so now whenever it's like that you are given the equation of AC remember the equation of AC was equal to if we go back to the first question is it the second question I think where there were um, if I just scroll up that's the question 4.2 says the equation of ac in the form of y so we said ac was y is equal to 4x minus 19 so you go and write it like that to say y is equal to 4x minus 19 that is the equation of what of ac and then we also have the equation of bd which is the previous question 4.6 
it says y is equal to minus 1 over 4x minus 2. So here we have got y is equal to minus 1 over 4x minus 2. If I can just... Okay, that is that. So now if d is the intersection, what they are trying to say is we are going to take these two equations and then you will have equation 1 and equation 2. So if I can now work it here to say we've got y is equal to the first one is 4x minus 19. And this will be my equation 1. And equation 2 will be y is equal to minus 1 over 4x minus 2. And this becomes my second equation. So now at that point of intersection, what you can conclude in the point of intersection here, at that point D, you need to know that uh, equation 1 is equal to equation 2. That is the thing that you must always know at that point of intersection. The two equations are equal. So what you need to do, then you have to equate the two equations. And otherwise, you have to say 4x minus 19 is equal to minus 1 over 4x minus 2. That's what it means in actual fact. So when you do that, you solve for x in whatever way you can solve for x. You can collect like terms so that um, the x jumps and then the number 19 also uh, jumps the sign. And you'll be having 4x plus 1 over 4x is equal to minus 2 plus 19. And then when you continue, you will then have, um, I prefer calculator now in this case, to say 4x plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. It is 17 over 4. So I will have 17 over 4x minus 2 plus 19 is equal to uh, 17. And then we can now solve, I mean, multiply by 4, multiply by 4, and then we will now have, in this case, after us removing the fraction, we will have uh, 17x is equal to 17 times 4. I don't need to simplify that because I can see there is 17 on the other side and there is 17 on the other side. So I didn't need to uh, use a calculator there. You can see that my x then gives me 4. Now when I've got my x, remember this is simultaneous equation, I can choose either equation 1 or 2. Let me choose equation 1, which is y is equal to, I can use uh, alternatively a different color, which is uh, y is equal to 4x minus 19. Now, it would be y is equal to 4 times 4 minus 19. And I'll get my y being, in this case, um, 4 times 4 minus 19, it gives me, gives me minus 3. So it says, if they say the coordinates of D in this case, I have now the coordinates of D being X, remember, is 4 and y is equal to negative 3. So these are the coordinates of d. But also it is important by looking at the diagram to see whether it makes sense to check if the x-axis are positive and the y-axis are negative. So if you go to the diagram, we don't need to... Remember, it is not drawn to scale, but it must also make sense. As you can see, 
the x-axis are positive after this this is 0 0 so this direction x is positive but this direction y is negative so you can see that it actually makes sense that x is 4 being positive and y is minus 3 being uh, in this case negative so this is how you would have approached uh, question number 4.7 now as I said it was out of 20 marks so it means we have come to the end of our lesson here and as you as you saw how I was approaching these questions I would encourage you again to grab hold our mathematics entry for the underdogs whereby as I said I cover in detail all the uh, parts on coordinate geometry this is not um, exhaustive I mean the questions did not actually cover everything on coordinate geometry just to get ready for your final exam you might be asked other different questions I will encourage you therefore to grab hold of that material we have come to the end of our lesson thank you